Hi, good afternoon, everybody. We welcome you all to today's webinar, which is presented by Mr. Riddish Farek uh, from HRD Antwerp. Today's webinar is on the challenges of jewelry grading and the need for retail education. We thank you all for coming and joining this webinar for uh, with us today. In case if you have any questions during the session, you can post your questions in the questions panel and we would take up those questions post the webinar is done. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Swapna, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I really thank you for the time that you are showing uh, towards the subject. The subject is really important. What we are going to discuss today and uh, the information that I'll share with you is on challenges of jewelry grading and the need for retail education. There are many subjects which are being discussed now and then, you know, with regards to diamonds, uh, jewelry, gemstones and everything. But the most crucial thing that is being discussed right now is threat of lab grown, threat of mixing, threat of uh, undisclosure of, you know, stones uh, and uh, uh, lab grown uh, diamonds which are being mixed in natural parcels. So this is one aspect and the other is the retail education part wherein everyone wants to increase their business. But what is important is that there is a lot of competition and unless or until we identify the consumer his requirements and we are ready ready to share our knowledge with the end consumer we will never be able to increase this business so what we do is at hrd antwerp we educate the retailers we educate their sales staff as to how to increase this business of theirs and uh, be uh, be effective in the competitive environment so to start with i would like to introduce hrd antwerp hrd antwerp is basically a it's a hundred percent subsidiary of the antwerp world diamond council we have multiple locations globally which are uh, strategically located we are our headquarters being in antwerp we have offices in Dubai, Hong Kong, Istanbul, Madrid, Mumbai, Ramadgan, Shanghai, and Surat. Mumbai itself, we have four locations, primarily one in Seeds, which caters to the jewelry segment for export businesses. We have recently opened up an office in the Bharat Diamond Bulls. It's the first office of a, an international laboratory. We have our Surat office, which caters to the equipment division, as well as, you know, it's a uh, window for pickup and drops. <clears throat> Our core businesses being our laboratory, we are into equipment, and we also have an education arm. Uh, our equip, uh, equipment are such are highly advanced that uh, there are mo most of the site holders, the major players in the industry, uh, have already uh, they keep on placing their orders with us. And our development R&D department uh, continuously inter interacts with them based on their requirements. And then we come up with new equipments. I'll be displaying a couple of equipments which we come up with recently. And uh, they will also, it will be followed by a demo also. Now to start with the first subject, which is challenges jewelry grading. <clears throat> the subject of jewelry grading is so intricate and uh, <clears throat> so difficult that very few laboratories have taken up this challenge it uh, it has a lot of uh, difficulties it has its own uh, uh, con uh, uh, concerns it has its own gray areas but if a laboratory is diligent enough to look through that to have their people trained then they can do jewelry grading very effectively so I'll share a few areas wherein you know it is high, uh, it is highly required that a laboratory has these disclosures in place. They take care of uh, uh, grading the jewelry as per uh, these requirements. Now, when we talk about jewelry, we are talking about my mounted stones. <clears throat> when st stones are, <clears throat> are in unmounted condition, what happens is we have 100% exposure of the stone <clears throat> and that stone actually can actually be, 
be tested in various equipments. We can identify the stone, whether it's a natural, whether it's a lab grown, it's a treated natural. What I mean by treated natural is that you could have naturally evolved diamonds, which are HPHT treated for color enhancement. They could also be treated for clarity enhancements. <clears throat> and these uh, uh, enhancements are like laser drilling and all. You have lab grown diamonds also, which can be treated and you know the color can be enhanced and then you have similance now when they are in loose condition it is highly it's very very easy for us to identify you have different types of machines which can identify uh, their origin but once it is mounted it is a huge challenge and to overcome this challenge is a speciality which a laboratory should be having so based on the equipments that we have developed in house we now have the ability to actually see through such enhancements see through such diamonds and identify them uh, based on their origin as to whether they are lab grown or natural so when you are looking at this slide we are talking about color grading which is one of the enhancements what happens is basically in a jewelry depending upon the type of setting most of the times the diamonds are graded face up so when they are graded face up there are different types of settings which are involved once they are mounted you have prong settings you have pave you have micro pave you have illusion settings you have close settings which is prominent in the south indian markets so these settings play a very crucial role determining the color also they play a very very uh, effective role when you know it comes to perceiving the color of the diamond and whilst whilst somebody is grading the jewelry there are a lot of chances that the color of the diamond could actually be mistaken so when you look at these two diamonds which i'm showing here as g and f <coughs> in unmounted condition it would be very easy for us to identify between these two color ranges but once they come in as mounted as you are seeing out here what you would feel is both of them are of the same color and there is a probability that the jewelry might uh, be graded in the same uh, and both the gemstones would be graded with the same color once once they are mounted so when i say that you know different types of settings play a very crucial role it is also metal because if you have these diamonds mounted on yellow metal with a, a 22 carat plate uh, gillet these diamonds would seem more better and more brighter but if they are in uh, a white gold with rhodium then it would be difficult for you to identify color that's for a lay person but when it comes to a laboratory our graders are trained to the effect to to such an extent that you know they uh, see through these effects and they grade the, grade the stones as per their color range so when you are grading them face up we have this challenge that you know uh, it becomes difficult and imperative for you to identify one color which is why in jewelry grading it is always graded uh, uh, all diamonds are graded with two color ranges when it comes to clarity grading like i said earlier the, it's the type of setting which you know really affects as to what clarity the stone could be in unmounted condition again you could see through these areas around the girdle maybe on the table you could have dark inclusions which are surrounding the girdle you could have you know bed marks and these can be easily hidden under inside a bezel setting inside uh, if it's a princess it could be hidden at, and under a pave or a channel set it could sorry uh, under a channel set or an uh, illusion set and there are transparent illusions you know which are difficult to locate when you're grading jewelry so when it comes to loose it is very very easy to identify but we have overcome this we have trained our people to see through this and now the clarity grading which is being uh, done is a single clarity grade which is being given and when there are any sort of 
discrepancies or uh, requirements where we need to unmount the uh, stones to have a better understanding, we request the people to do that. Cut. <clears throat> when it, like I said again, when it comes to different types of settings, it is difficult to grade as to what cut it could be, it, whether it's a weak, very good cut, whether it's a good cut. So again, setting plays a very important role. Shape of the stones, you could have different types of shapes, but then you would, it's difficult for you to actually understand whether it is of a, an excellent cut or whether it's a very good cut. So a split grade is always given when uh, the grading is done for cut on jewelry. When it, now we talk about carrot, we, normally what happens when we people are grading jewelry is that it is the manufacturers who mention the carrot weight of the dam damage which are mounted on the jewelry piece. What we do out here in house is that we even measure the diameter to have an approximate weight so that you know it is within a tolerance range. There are stones which could be of shallow cut but we would seem larger <clears throat> and if it is very neatly set under a bezel then the stone could appear to be more larger than it is. So this kind of a challenge will always arise which is why we have certain measures uh, which we take when you know when we are determining the carrot weight and mentioning it on our report when you have uh, uh, prongs it is very easy to identify you know uh, as to what the uh, girdle diameter could be but when it comes to carrot weight based on the diameter it is difficult but with certain settings it is very very easy and it can be actually identified Now, retail education is something which, which is really, really important for any jeweler <clears throat> because what happens is when, whenever a consumer walks in, walks in, we have noticed by personal experience is that every, every salesperson is in a race to attend to that consumer and not you know, addressing his requirements before addressing his requirements. So first of all, it is most important that you know you make the con consumer feel comfortable. You understand what their requirements are. You understand what the occasion is, and then accordingly attend to them. What we do at HRD is we have <coughs> customized courses, and these courses are customized based on the demography. So before the staff even knows about it. We have our people, you know, who go down to that showroom as mystery customers. They walk in as a customer without the salespeople knowing about them. They put in their requirements. They take, gather feedback. They understand how the person is attending to them. And then they, once after the analysis is done, <clears throat> we actually go down to that jeweler or a showroom owner and prescribe what all changes are required to enhance their sales. And what, what we basically do is we look at the right people, we identify what all areas they need corrections in, and we empower them with the right information. This information could be with regards to sales techniques. It could be with regards to uh, diamonds. It could be regards to uh, settings. It could be either technical or it could be in terms of salesmanship. But most importantly is that if they, the salesperson is aware about the subject that he is speaking on, it becomes very, very easy for, to, for him to convince a consumer to buy what they have come and are looking for. So, and then every time a consumer comes in, there are a lot of queries which they will pose in as to what kind of diamonds are there, what kind of stones have been mounted on the jewelry, what is, what are the four C's, or how is it that a diamond is valued differently in a different showroom. So resolving them to uh, 
uh, ensure that the consumer confidence is at its peak, uh, a salesperson has to be empowered with such knowledge. And once empowered, it will surely increase the sale. And this is what we have seen happening effectively at all the showrooms wherein you know our trainers have going have been going on there and doing retail, these training sessions. <clears throat> HRD Anto, while being in uh, doing a lot of services globally, there are multiple services which are being offered in India. What I in the way I, uh, the things that I said in the, uh, my introduction. The first being our laboratory services. What we do is we do uh, grading of our diamonds out here. It's starting from eight uh, star and melee minus twos to all sizes. We have uh, we are very shortly going to increase our grading to up to 9.99 carat. We have an ongoing festival where we are doing a five carat plus uh, grading out here. You can submit all your goods in number of size and there's no size limit to it. And what you see out, out here on display are the different types of reports which we issue once the diamond is graded. You can even have it sealed, uh, packed in a tamper proof ceiling. So it, it works as a very good investment and for a diamond which you want to use in the future. And it also safeguards the, uh, your diamond from any sort of damages happening otherwise. <clears throat> this ceiling you can use when you buy it from a retail showroom owner and you can take the ceiling to a jeweler and have the stone mounted there and then in front of you. This is jewelry is something which we have now begun. We were always doing jewelry, but it was mainly for end consumers. Now we have started to do it on a commercial level in India. Like we said that we have started up an office in uh, Seeps, which caters to the export market. Shortly, we will be starting for the domestic market also. This is the type of report. <clears throat> if you look out here, we have a differentiation between, you know, the center stone, which is a solitaire and the essence, which are very, of very small sizes. <clears throat> we are mentioning gra different grades for both of these uh, different types of stones. The solitaire is mentioned out here. Plus the 74 diamonds, which are mentioned out here are the essence. We have a description of the jewelry piece and wherein we mentioned the gold content, which is in carriage. It could be 24, 22, 18, and so on. We mentioned the color of the metal. We mentioned the type of diamonds, the cut, and all the four sheets, basically. <clears throat> we have a report also, which can we, we can customize as per the jeweler's requirements. So for enhancement of uh, uh, the showroom staff, we have the education services, we have students coming in, we have people sending their children for education out here. It helps them in taking up a job elsewhere or to set up their own business. We have five full days or 10 half days of a diamond practical workshop, wherein there's a lot of emphasis in uh, training them uh, practically. And the stones which have been chosen to do our courses are highly intricate, different types, different versions. So we try to ensure that they maximize their skills when they are taking up a course here. We have retail for sales training. These are two to four full days or half, two or four half days. Uh, in this, we have uh, we have we enhance their skills in salesmanship and identify identification of customers. And we also have market related workshops wherein, you know, we could improve where people feel that they need to improvise. Their staff needs to improvise on their color grades, maybe cut grades. If the people, there are people who are uh, who are falling short of their grading and who feel that they need to align with the laboratory. This can easily happen once they take up these kind of workshops. So their hit ratio on getting the right grades is uh, highly possible. <clears throat> we have custom made programs. What, what we have seen is that in the last one year since the time we've started, <clears throat> we have had a lot of uh, retail showroom owners, chain store owners coming to us saying that they needed, they felt that there, there was a need for their staff to be trained 
with the, the day to day changes which are happening in the current market scenario. They really understand the need that, you know, their people need to be aware about the knowledge of different types of stones, different types of settings, the kind of advancements that have happened with regards to uh, development of labor uh, lab grown diamonds. And <clears throat> we are seeing that uh, once the, they have taken up this seminar, they have had a better understanding. Their sales are increasing. There's a high level of confidence in the salesperson or the floor managers after having taken up these uh, trainings and you know attended such seminars. The third part of our business is equipment. Like I said earlier, uh, a lot of uh, time is invested in doing research and development based on the feedback that we receive from the market and the advancements that we know notice and uh, happening around us. <clears throat> Our equipment is basically uh, aimed at, you know, uh, providing uh, people with the uh, power to actually, you know, uh, get their stones uh, graded or identified in the right manner. So what we have basically lately introduced the recently way to start with is that we have a microscope which is known as the D scope plus it is an advancement of the D scope which is widely used by the industry leaders also by many of the laboratories and uh, the functionality of the D scope plus the advancements that we have made is that it has three light sources one being the yellow light one being the ultraviolet uh, light and one being the UV light. So it you can switch over from one light source to the other or, uh, and not invest in three different microscopes for the sake. We have the M screen plus uh, uh, since a lot of there has been always a, the, the major cost of constraint uh, with in today's the business scenario is the mixing of diamonds which is happening in from the smallest of sizes to the largest of sizes. So for star and melee goods up to 20 pointers, uh, we have the M screen plus, which has lately, uh, which has been introduced in the market. It is a highly effective product in which we grade, uh, which we, wherein we are screening basically uh, half pointers to 20 pointers, uh, D to J colors. These are round diamonds that we screen. And most importantly is that all the stones are bifurcated between natural uh, referrals, simulants, and so on. It's a very easy process. You do not need uh, to be, uh, you could, uh, you need not have any academic background, you know, to actually operate on this machine and understand the readings. It is very easy to operate. And a lot of people are, have, have started to order this. What I'll show is a, you is a small video where you can actually see how it is being done. I'll just switch on the video for you to understand it easily. What you're seeing here is the diamond flowing inside after you have put in. <clears throat> All the diamonds are turned upside down before the process begins. And our speed ranges up to 15,000 stones an hour, which is the highest for any equipment which has been developed globally. You are seeing these four trays in which diamonds have actually been put in. You can actually see the speed at which the diamonds are moving.
Okay, so that was for star and melee goods. You could also do up till 20 pointers. But then this machine, what the machine, this machine, uh, the uh, entering plus had its limitations wherein it was differentiating. But there were reference also which actually need to be identified for which what uh, the solution is the DTEC. The DTEC is a machine wherein, you know, actually you can put these referrals on a tray out here and based on different light sources, you can actually uh, identify as to the diamonds, whether they're, they're natural or lab grown. I will show you a video wherein, you know, it will be easy for you to understand this process also. It is very easy. You put your diamonds or your jewelry in this tray. All right, so that was about our equipment, about uh, the education arm and uh, the laboratory services that we render. Feel free to come contact us at the above on the on screen details. And I'm open to any questions if you want to send some. Okay, it's interesting to know. We received a lot of questions now. Uh, there is Mr. Samir S. Uh, from Delhi. Okay, to answer your question, Mr. Samir. Uh, Mr. Samir has a question. He wants to actually uh, have his uh, people trained so that, you know, there are a lot of queries that the consumers po uh, put across and uh, the, uh, it's difficult for them, his uh, staff to answer all those queries. Now, which is why we told you, uh, I have put my screen details also. I will again share my details with you. Uh, we can actually come over to Delhi and train your staff, Mr. Samir. Uh, it will be an investment of time. Uh, your people would be trained based up, uh, on their requirements. We have different training modules wherein we train the managers at a different level, the showroom staff at a different level. And uh, you could always uh, uh, call on us at the mentioned numbers or the email ID, which I'll share with you. And then we can take up uh, this issue. Yes, this Viprika Jain who's asked me, that when a jewelry is sent for grading to HRD, do you mention the metal carrot and the diamond details both? Yes, we mentioned the metal carrot and the diamond details when it comes to exports uh, the metal carrot is not important because uh, people have their own testing mechanisms out there internationally which they uh, do but when it comes to the local uh, arm we are going to have a hallmarking agency which will actually look into the content of the metal plus we also do an in-house check for the metal content 
we are planning on having the hallmark logo which will be uh, on the jewelry as well as uh, the report Mr. Pramod Mehta, I think uh, your question is very, very relevant. How do you differentiate between a CVD diamond in jewelry and natural diamonds? Like I said, we have our equipments uh, which have been, which are technologically um, in very advanced stages. We have come up with the DTEC in which, you know, if we put the jewelry uh, on the tray and we uh, process it through the DTEC, it is easy for us to identify whether those diamonds are lab grown or natural. Earlier, it was not the case, which is why there were a lot of restrictions for us grading them. But now with the DTEC being introduced into the uh, by us, it's easy for us to identify them. Uh, Ms. Sarla Shah, yes, you can always look up at our site for courses. We provide corporate trainings also. If you would uh, uh, send us an email with regards to your requirements and as to what kind of training that you require, I mean, require your locations, multiple if any, we will surely uh, put you up and uh, have your people trained for that reason, for that purpose. Uh, Ms. Viprika Jain, again, what are the ch challenges faced with recent distribution of lab-grown diamonds? Well, whatever's happened is uh, something which we cannot take charge of or we cannot uh, control. Whatever, what we emphasize basically to all our clients and the customers and what is being discussed is that, you know, there should be full disclosure about the origin of the diamonds. But uh, it has been difficult. It has been it has been really challenging because there are new advancements which are happening. But simultaneously, you know, there's a lot of R&D happening at our end also, wherein we are coming up with equipments to grade such diamonds. And uh, what's best to do is to have one or the other equipment if you can afford, if you are in that in the business. Else, you can always take a, a, a veil of our services, which come at a very nominal cost compared to the diamond worth. And you can be assured that, you know, the jewelry that you own or uh, you deal in or the diamonds that you own or deal in are of natural origin. Okay, Mr. Sachin Shah, uh, your question. Yes, with the recent definition bills passed by FTC, uh, this is something which has actually happened around four years back. There are many organizations like Sibjo and everyone who have agreed to the fact that, you know, the word diamond itself with or without a prefix or a suffix is uh, sufficient enough to uh, for a person to understand that what we when we mention the word diamond it means naturally evolved and not lab grown yes it will take a lot of time for people to actually start implementing it because when uh, until you know that was introduced or that was uh, defined People have invested in a lot of consumables with the word natural mentioned to emphasize that the stone which was being graded or the diamonds that were being graded were of natural origin. So once that is done, I don't think it is a very difficult uh, challenge to you know take up and adapt the new uh, terminology wherein the word diamond itself means uh, naturally evolved. <clears throat> yes, once the adaption, uh, adaptation takes place, uh, diamond itself would denote that it is of natural origin. I, Mr. Samir, uh, I thank you for having had shared your time with us and uh, we look forward to serving you 
uh, since you have already my, uh, you have already noted my details look forward to serving you so mr pramod mehta has a question wherein he is asking whether you know uh, sapphire or emeralds which are being used uh, whether we are, uh, identify these stones we don't uh, we only identify diamonds in mounted condition we are not and uh, we have not yet started to identify gemstones in mounted conditions yet so which is why we just uh, mentioned the details of the diamonds on the reports so i feel i have answered most of the questions yes mr samir also had a question again that many times customers come in walking into the showroom uh, and wanting them wanting them to check their diamonds without the diamonds being affected yes of course you can do that uh, uh if these are small diamonds we have you can uh, have them uh, a detect in place or you could actually send them to our uh, office in mumbai we would surely render you the service and uh, you would have a report which says that you know the jewelry which you have submitted to us has all naturally uh, grown uh, naturally evolved diamonds mounted on them i think that's it yes i think those are the questions that we had for today in case if someone still has any questions uh, feel free to just post into the questions panel and we would uh, surely take it up exactly i have put my contact details again on the screen for everyone uh, everyone's benefit feel free to note them down and uh, get in touch with us for any uh, requirements with regards to laboratory services education or equipment fine that's it then this is radesh parekh signing off now thank you thank you all for attending this webinar thank you all for attending this session uh, on behalf of the gem atlas team i would like to thank mr parekh and hrd for having this uh, informative webinar for us today with this we are signing off the webinar i'm happy to have you all here thank you